This tutorial is to show you how to solve a system of equations involving fractions. So the first thing I would like to do is separate this first part into one equation and then the other, just so that I can work with one first. Um, I'm not going to be doing the substitution method because I still believe that doing the elimination method is going to be faster. But the first thing first is to get rid of all the fractions. I know, it's a great way to simplify the problem before you even start. The way I do that is I treat the entire equation by um, putting parentheses around everything to remind me that I'm going to be multiplying something to every single term. That way the equal sign stays uh, equivalent and the equation is balanced. Now the first thing I'm going to look for is what's called the lowest common denominator. In this case I only have one which is two so that must be my lowest common denominator. And if I take this two and multiply it with the distributive property into every single term, it will eliminate all of the fractions. So if I multiply the two into the x, I'm gonna copy this part for my next step so that we can see it. Okay, um, and because this will be my next step, I'm gonna get rid of the parentheses. Okay, so the two being multiplied into the x gives me two x. Two being multiplied to the one half actually becomes 2 over 2, which is just 1. Um, and I can put a 1 there or I can just leave it uh, nothing because there's an implied 1. Same thing on the other uh, side of the equal sign, 2 times 9 halves, I can think of it as 18 halves divided by 2, which is 9. Or I can think of 2 right here, 2 times 9 divided by 2. And instead of just saying that, I'm going to write it 2 times 9 like this, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times 9 is just 9. So that's another way of thinking about it. And this equation is much, uh, it looks a lot easier, it's a lot simpler, there's less uh, numbers involved, and I think it'll be much easier to work with. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this one, although on this one, since there are two denominators, four and six, I have to find the common denominator for both of them. So I want the, um, there's lots of common denominators. Uh, they'll both go into 24, they'll both go into 36, but I actually would like the smallest number so that I have a, the nicest equation. So four and six, actually both of those, the smallest number is 12. So I'm going to do 12 times everything here. And when I do that, again, I'm still going to get rid of all of the denominators. And in this one, I'm going to show it instead of just um, talking about it like I did in this one because I have more. So doing the distributive, that will be 12 times every single term. And I'm going to write that in here. 12 times. There we go. Okay. And because of I've now distributed it to every single term. I'm going to take off the parentheses and work with each term individually. 12 times 1 is 12 divided by 4 is 3, or you can just think of 12 divided by 4, which is 3 times 1, which is 3. So we're going to get, uh, we'll just delete some things here so it'll be nicer. There we go. So we end up with 3x. Now 12, oops here, 12 times 1, 6, I can think of 12 divided by 6, which is just 2. Uh, and then the last one, again, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and I have 5 over 2, and, sorry, uh, 2 times 5, which is 10. There we go. So uh, I wonder if it would be easier to just draw that in there. Um, I really prefer doing this by hand, but I can't really show that to you guys. So I, I actually cross these out like this and show that I'm going through the operation 12 divided by 6, and I write a 2 here because I've already done that operation. And here again gives me a 3, and I apologize for the handwriting with a mouse <laughs> that doesn't work very um, efficiently. Okay, so then I get 2 times 5, which is 10. Another way you can think about it is 12 times 5, which is 60, divided by 6 is 10 as well, but I like working with smaller numbers, so I divide first and then multiply. It's a preference. 
Now I have two equations that are much easier to be working with. And then I'm going to go through it with the elimination method just like we've done before. I know it sounds a little silly that I'm going to be multiplying one of these again, but I do think it's faster than trying to work with all of the fractions in the substitution method. All right, so I'm just going to pick a variable to get rid of, and I see it's conveniently one is negative and one is positive. So I'm going to, on the y, so I'm just going to get rid of the y. So I will take this equation and multiply it by a positive 2 so that the coefficients in front of parenthesis, make sure I get everything multiplied. Uh, coefficient is just the word for the number in front of the variable so that the coefficient in front of the y matches and when I uh, combine them it'll eliminate the y value. All right, so then I get I'm going to copy this guy here and then 2 times 2 gives me 4x so I'll change this to 4. 2 times there's a 1 here in front of the y so it just becomes 2 times 1 which is 2 and then 2 times 9 gives me 18 and I'm going to bring this equation down one more time so that we can just see as we add those together and I'm going to draw that in here as well. We're going to give us an addition sign like this <laughs> so that I'm adding these two equations. The reason I can do that is if this equals this and this equals this, then if I add these two together, it'll give me the same thing as adding these two together. Kind of like um, if you have a equals b and b equals c, then a equals c kind of a thing. So um, it's going to keep these equations and this equal sign here balanced because they're equal to each other. All right, on the left-hand side, 2y minus 2y is 0. And then I have 4x plus 3x, which gives me 7x. And I don't want to draw that <laughs> for you because I think that will get even more messy. So we're just going to put this in here. Move it over in place. Okay, so the y's are gone. And then on the left hand side, 3 plus 4 gives me 7. On the right hand side over here, 28 pl or <laughs> 18 plus 10 gives me 28. 28. And then to solve for x, I just divide both sides by 7. And I do like to put that down on another line, although it copied those. Okay, so I have 7x equals 28. Um, I'm going to divide by 7, take on this side, divide by 7, and then I'm left with on the left hand side, 7 divided by 7 is, I forgot to take that out too, uh, 7 divided by 7 uh, is 1, so I'm just left with x. x oops, e equals, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. So this right here is my answer. Now I know some of you are thinking that was kind of a long way to get there, especially with the, the elimination method, but I did avoid a lot of fractions. And so in this one, it might have been uh, fewer steps maybe. I don't think so actually, but you're going to have a lot of fractions that you're going to be multiplying together. If you are comfortable with fractions, then that's fine. I love that method too, um, but I do prefer the elimination method. All right, now I need to go back and find y. Now I have lots of equations I can use. This is the original, this is an original, and I can go put x in for those. I also have this one and this one, which I think I prefer, in fact, this one because y is all by itself. I am going to choose that one just because it'll be the uh, most, sim most simple for doing all of the arithmetic. So uh, every time I substitute something in, I'm going to put parentheses so I don't miss anything. And then the only thing I need to put in is the 4. So I have 2 times 4, which is 8. Uh, I do like to show steps, so I'm going to copy this. I know you're probably okay with uh, just moving forward now that you're to this point, but I do like writing it down. Um, and I think it helps prevent 
uh, typos or mistakes or negatives. Uh, and then we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. Minus 8, minus 8. So then I'm left with 8 minus 8 is 0, so I'm left with y on the left equals 9 minus 8 gives me 1. And that is my ordered pair right there. I'm going to highlight those, but I will put them in the ordered pair 4 because x comes first, comma 1, and this is my answer. So this is an independent solution um, or system of equations because I ended up with one solution. So these two lines crossed at one point and the answer was 4, 1. I hope this helps with uh, working of fractions in your homework.